This is Hall of Fame of Marshall Falk. Hey, this is Austin Eckler. Hey, this is Allen Robinson. Hey, this is David Johnson. This is Melvin Gordon. Hey, this is Jonathan Taylor. Hey, this is Kenyon Drake. Hey, this is Darren Waller. Hey, this is DeAndre Hopkins. Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes. And, and you're, you're listening, listening to the Fantasy Football Footballers Podcast. Podcast. Welcome to episode 1000 of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. <laughs> Welcome in. Oh, 1,000 shows. Wow. <laughs> We're under assault. Oh, my goodness. Whee! Somehow my mug made it through <laughs> unscathed. Mine didn't. Oh, yeah. You got to go to YouTube. Welcome into the show. The 1,000th episode of the podcast. I am now drinking confetti from my mug. We have, well, by we, I mean Jason has been making oh my goodness. Uh, very funny jokes about this being our final show. Mm-hmm. The sound of those uh, confetti cannons almost turned it into the final show. You I were, think I think my heart, very afraid. my heart stopped. Look, I'm a, I'm a skittish man. <laughs> I startle easy. <laughs> Holy Toledo. And you really, uh, the producers are, are laughing back there. Well done, by the way. I, you really only had one shot, or did you have backups? We did not have backups. No backups. Wow. We, did, we did a test earlier, and that, we're confident enough to roll with it. Wow. Right. Al Borland, Judge Giamatti. <laughs> That's impressive. No backups is kind of the theme of this show. Yeah. We don't we don't go back. Safe, we go f- safety nets are for amateurs. <laughs> when you're when you're gonna slack line across the Grand Canyon, yeah. there's no out. You just do it. <laughs> if you're gonna slack line across the Grand Canyon, yeah, I hold on tight. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, think evil Knievel had. Safety nets? No, that's why his body was broken all the time. <laughs> that's why his hospital bills are so high. I thought you were going to say that's why he's dead right now. All right, uh, show 1000, welcome in. We are, we're with uh, you, Foot Clan. Uh, the three of us are along for the ride, so yeah. to speak, on today's episode. We do have, uh, it's playoff week. We've got some assistance to bring to you playoff teams out there. I mean, I don't need it this week because I have the bye week in Dynasty. Congratulations. So I, I'm actually not going to research at all. Oh, that's bad because you're you're still playing in other leagues. In fact, you are playing against <laughs> you are playing against Mike in yes. our league of record, which I was very disappointed. You told me I was. I know. I was wrong. And Mike has a lot of injuries, and I wanted that. Instead, I'm getting Derek Yeti against me. Yeah, mm. so we do have – Mike and I have a, a long and storied rivalry in our league of record. We had three consecutive years where we met in the fantasy championship game. Each of those years more painful than the oh. one prior for Jason. Yeah, that was the uh, the dark era, that's, <laughs> as the it's dark called. Ages. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. And uh, we have some buy-sell today. We're going to talk about that Tuesday night game, which is not a phrase I've said very often. Tuesday night football. Tuesday night football. Uh, there's, there's, what, three games on Christmas this year, too? ChristmasFootball.com? Yeah, ChristmasFootball.com. <laughs> ChristmasFootball.com. I'm on my way. <laughs> And uh, we have some special segments that we literally don't know what they are. The producers, the team, have put them together. And if they go as well as that intro, uh, this is going to be a spectacular episode of the show. And I'll be deceased. And Michael, Michael be I'm, dead. I'm not making it through another round of and, those. And if this is your first show, welcome in. <laughs> this is not how it normally goes. But congratulations on making 1,000 your first. I encourage you, stick around for show 2000 yeah every every thousand which is shows. our which is our final show by right. the way 2000 episode 2000 yeah. will be our final show yeah this is the final countdown <laughs> yes <laughs> and if you're not watching on youtube which you can do youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers mike is wearing his famous pink suit that he wore to the espies mm. uh where i i believe you spent some time with uh robbie anderson oh i did good friend of the show yes great friend of the show <laughs> he was very into uh our conversation. I, and I talked to Jared Goff as well. Was he into the pink suit? Was Goff into the pink suit? Oh, I mean, who wasn't? <laughs> yes. Uh, one announcement. This was this was well timed. Got word this morning. The nominations for my Heart Radio for all of the podcast awards came out, mm-hmm. and we were fortunate enough to be nominated 
for the best sports podcast again. That is three straight. Yeah, three straight nominations. Yes. We have uh, a victory in that in that run, and we'll see what happens this year. But uh, thank you, everyone. Yeah. Uh, I guess that should be said uh, at the top of this show as yes. we get into it. Yeah, yes. it's a good place to start with the thank yous. <sighs> thank you, everybody out there, for the past 1,000 shows. It's pretty crazy to think about uh, from I, – I shared a picture of us in our upstairs bedroom when we started, and you guys have supported the show – there's another 250 episodes of the of the Footcast in there, our weekly episode for all of you that have supported us to join the Foot.com, and thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And we've we've made it to a thousand, in incredible. All right, uh, any quick thoughts on the Tuesday night game? Yeah, I, I, a, a couple thoughts. Number one, uh, n while the passing yardage was not what you would hope for, it was good to see Lamar Jackson doing. A portion of the things that you drafted Lamar Jackson to do, he had he finished with two touchdowns through the air. He had the the big rushing touchdown, ninety four uh, rushing yards for Lamar Jackson. So and and that was coming off of COVID. And if you saw there was he had a quote saying like, "I don't wish COVID on anybody." And so clearly Lamar Jackson was very sick. Uh, you know, that's one of the, one of the things that is not released to the public is severity, is the severity of yeah. the symptoms for, for these players as they're unfortunately suffering through it. Miles Garrett came out recently and said it was it, yeah. really hard on him too. So Lamar Jackson coming back to health it, right off of, uh, his recovery, putting this game up. That was good to see his matchups for the, the fantasy playoffs are also great. 107 passing yards. Is that what you were saying you weren't quite looking for? Right. Yeah, yeah. that, that yeah. part sucked. Well, watching the game, I felt like Lamar Jackson stunk. I mean, he he, he had a great fantasy game. Uh, you know, he's always a threat on the ground. The Dallas Cowboys, I mean, man, did their defense just not show up for this game. No, they did not. They were run all over. 294 rushing yards for Baltimore. So it's it's one of those things where I think it was more about the matchup than Lamar. He didn't look good as a passer as he hasn't looked good since week 1. The throw to Hollywood Brown was pretty good. Well, in the that's end not to say he doesn't have a flash every game, but consistency hasn't been there. But the nice thing is if the you know, if the schedule opens up for him and he's got more Dallas Cowboys ahead, well then great. <laughs> and JK Dobbins Oh! Spontaneous congratulations. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hola, amigos. Brad Evans here from FTN what? Fantasy. Gents, congratulations on reaching a number of my unflinching man crush. Hashtag mandatory Montgomery. May never achieve in a single season on the ground. 1,000. You guys are industry pioneers, <laughs> affable dudes who not only possess an infectious sense of humor, but also a wonderful woodsy scent. <laughs> when we all can gather again, I can't oh. wait to scratch and sniff each one of you. Oh, my goodness. Here's to the next 10,000. <laughs> Mike, Mike is not going to survive this no, show. No, I'm going to end up as a weepy mess by the yeah, end. I, yeah, this this show is going to be bananas <laughs> the rest of the way. I am telling you, Jason diagnosed it quickly. As the host of 1,000 episodes of the show mm -hmm. and a bit of a control freak. A bit. A bit a, of a, a control a, a bit. Yes, Andy. a little bit. <laughs> I am, uh, you know, they like you going to be surprised. There's type A, and then there's type capital A. <laughs> I, now I'm feeling a little bit of self conscious. No, it, no it's it's not a bad thing. It's, it, that's who my you name's are. Andy. Yeah, with capital, a capital A. a. That's true. <laughs> so, anyways, before oh no, oh, what's <laughs> happening? Spontaneous congratulations. Okay. What's up, fellas? It's JJ Zacharyson here. Hey, big congrats on your 1,000th episode. You guys probably need like some sort of vocal cord massage at this point. But yes. it's a huge milestone. You guys should feel really proud. The fantasy football world, we're very lucky to have you. And it's been an absolute blast getting to become friends with you guys over the last handful of years. And I always say this to you when I get to see you, but I'm really glad that it was you three who found the success that you found in the fantasy football industry because you're three genuinely awesome people. You're no different off the air as you are on the air. I love you guys. Congrats again. Thank you, JJ. Well, this show is... Dang it, you guys. <laughs> you Thank you, JJ. suck. So, <laughs> that's so nice. Yeah. That was, that's very nice. Whew. Okay. So, J.K. Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins. <laughs> uh, speaking of sneaking things uh, into a show, J.K. Dobbins snuck it up to 100. 
<laughs> as my taking it to 100 player. I mean, he was. Oh man, he was already. He had a, a solid game for a running back for fantasy purposes. 11 for 71 with the touchdown. The touchdown came right at the very end, but everyone on the ground having incredible success. The Gus bus. except for Mark Ingram. <laughs> The Gus bus was oh uh, there, he was stopping for no he, no pickups on this on this bus. He trip. could have made the bridge jump in speed. Yes, one hundred percent. I mean, seven for one hundred one. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that and again, Jason brought it up. Can't overreact. Dallas didn't show up on defense. Andy Dalton was all right, two eighty five and two. He was. I, I actually thought the Dallas Cowboys offense gave me hope. In in fact, I would say <clears throat> what I saw out of the Cowboys gave me a lot of hope going forward because their defense continues to be as bad as it was at the beginning of the year and their offense is starting to you know get together with Andy Dalton and connect uh, so this is one of those things where they're going to be down mm -hmm. they will be down because their defense stinks and their defense is committed to that they're they're absolutely committed to the highest draft pick they can get and uh, the offense will have to you know, keep up, and they're not always going to have to be thrown against the Baltimore Ravens. So I, I do like Dallas's options going forward. And Zeke, Zeke actually had some success on the ground, which look, you can have a. It, that's great to have a confidence boost, uh, boost in Ezekiel Elliott moving into the playoffs, and uh, nice to have a little. Uh, you know, who do we got the Ravens next against the Cleveland Browns? Yeah, I was going to say, Clayus Campbell's not himself right now. Yeah, he's not healthy, and now you have Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt. Mm -hmm. Cream hunt against you, Mike. Uh, let's go ahead and move to some buy sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. I feel like I need to have my head on a swivel today. <laughs> Apparently, you never know what's gonna happen. Have you looked up, Mike? Oh, there's, right. some, there's some confetti trapped up there. Yeah, there are, there's confetti everywhere. <laughs> It's delicious. Uh, all right, last week we all went two for three on buy sell, so that's nice. You know, two for three is not bad. Nope. And this week we've got week fourteen buy sell stinkers from week fourteen and whether they're mm. going to redeem themselves. So the first buy sell, Alvin Kamara at Philadelphia, is he a top ten running back? As Ooh. of right now, I expect Taysom Hill to be the quarterback. And if that is the case, I do not expect Alvin Kamara to be a top 10 running back. I think he's good. I think you should start him. I know you will start him, but I don't believe he's a top 10 guy. So much of his production, we've said it before, 68% of his production in PPR leagues came from the passing game prior to the change at quarterback. That is a lot to give up. He's still now, phenomenal. Now to be clear, the redemption is based off of last year's matchups. Just, yeah, because Kamara had a good week last yes, week. Yes, Kamara was a yeah. top 12 running back. But if you look at the notes here. Oh, okay. This is fantasy stinkers from week 14 of 2019. Yes. Last year. Er, fantasy burns in the playoffs. So 2019 versus San Francisco, Kamara not uh, not not on top of his game. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to. So am I buying that he is bad again or am I selling that he's not good? You're going to buy or sell top 10 running back performance from Alvin Kamara. Sell. Mm. I'm going to sell it too. I don't think he's top 10 this week. What do you think, Mike? Uh, yeah, it, <clears throat> despite Philadelphia's offensive um, disgustingness sure. that, that, that we have uh, we have seen, their defense has still been you know, pretty stout aside from uh, uh, Darius Slay getting, <laughs> getting wrecked. Uh, so I'm going to go I'm going to go ahead and I will sell it. If we're all I selling, wanna, yeah. Then I will just point out, you said last week he had a really good game. He was back. the running back 11 last yeah. week, so he would have sold on his really good week. That's yeah. true. Tyler Lockett against the Jets. Oh, hot Lockett. It's been, it's been a cold Lockett. Hot Lockett. <laughs> on fire. I just hop right in right now. <laughs> I'm buying. My man is showing up for the playoffs. Oh. And he oh. is going to help me destroy the Yeti in our league of record. Tyler Lockett, absolutely top 15 wide receiver this week. You've been saying that in the mirror this morning? So. <laughs> yeah. Tyler Lockett, cryptozoologist. Exactly. That's right. Uh, I'm going to sell it. I'm top just going to. When's the last time we've had a top 15 for Tyler Lockett? Has it been since the Cardinals? Uh, I don't think he's yeah. done it since Arizona. Yeah. So in, in the three last. Three weeks ago. Yeah. Against Arizona. So in the last, what, two months, we've seen Tyler Lockett be 
good for fantasy yeah, twice. He certainly can do this. There's yeah. no, no question. I'm just going to take the odds of re- recent odds for Tyler Lockett. So I'm going to sell. What are you doing, Mike? 15 is a good line because yeah, it's it, not hard to sneak in there. I'm going to make his last six weeks so hard to comprehend. <laughs> Yeah, not so sneaky lately. I'm going to take the odds, too. I will st- – oh. I mean, I, I you're, when it comes to rankings, you're going to have him ranked as a top 15 guy because it should happen. Because you would – well, here's Correct. the thing. When, you would when play you, him over other players. Exactly. When you've got Tyler Lockett, you're going to play him over other players. That doesn't necessarily mean that's where we think he'll finish. That's the – that's where – we believe we would start them because there's upside that factors into rankings, and and he has the upside. He's been the the wide receiver one on a week twice this year. Yeah, and rankings. I mean, if you think about it this way, if Tyler Lockett, let's say he has a fifty fifty shot, that's our evaluation. Fifty fifty shot of being top fifteen, and then another wide receiver has a you know a forty percent chance. I'm going to rank Tyler Lockett higher. You know, even sure. if I don't think either one are favored to do so. So Lockett, um, I'm selling in part because I I want to twist the knife on Jason if, if it doesn't go right. I'm going to buy it. Okay. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> uh, Marvin Jones is a top 24 wide receiver against Green Bay this week. Mm. Is this contingent on Galladay missing another week? Uh, yes. Because it makes all the difference in the world to me. I will absolutely buy this if he is not back out there, which I don't think he will be. So I'll buy uh, Marvin Jones against uh, – he's got – Three top 11 finishes in the past six weeks. I'm going to yeah, buy it. The, the matchup against Green Bay is not what you prefer for your fantasy playoffs, but the matchup against Chicago last week was not something that you would be excited about. Uh, we've seen 29% of the targets against Chicago, 30% against Houston, a couple weeks ago against Washington, 31%. He is seeing a huge amount of the Detroit targets while Kenny Galladay is sidelined. He is in – and we talked about – the the unleashing that uh, interim coach Bevel has uh, seemingly in seemingly one game done one game yeah. very short sample but it's but it's not just the one game it's the one game combined with last year's uh, unleashing so you put those two together and this this leash is off it's <laughs> und yeah I, I I think the line is one that uh, odds I'm say, buying it I think the odds say you should buy I am going to sell on the basis of Jair Alexander. I think that he is a a really great cornerback. And, you know, we saw a couple weeks ago against Houston, uh, Marvin Jones got 12 targets. That, I mean, you 12 targets, you're top 24, except he finished the week as the wide receiver 42. So What about 12 targets against Chicago, Jason? How'd that go? Wide receiver 5. Yes. It's a touchdown situation, and I don't think he gets it against Jair Alexander. All right, that was Buy or Sell from Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit. You want to go? Talk about some news? Uh, I'm, I'm, I think so. I'm skittish. I'm going to hit the news button. News and notes from around the league. All right. Jalen Hurts, starting quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, Good. brother. Good luck. He gets the Saints. Yeah. Good luck, Jalen. We offer Jalen <laughs> as tribute. Uh, I, we were talking in the studio yesterday. Mike is playing the... Saints defense against me. I am. And uh, I was kind of like, oh, great. You know, Jalen Hurts, rookie. I mean, it's not good, but is it better for me than Carson Wentz starting? Probably. It, it yes. is, and here's why. Carson Wentz he's, has been taking so many sacks because we've all seen it. He is skittish in the pocket, holds the ball too long, moves around without reason or rationale. And <laughs> Did you guys – like, we didn't really talk about it. Sorry, Jason, but the Andy Dalton – uh, where he was scrambling around the pocket, and then he did this weird jump, and he threw both hands out like like he saw a bee on the field. <laughs> did anybody else? See I did. This I happen? didn't follow I that. Did oh. not catch it. Oh, it was it was tremendous. I did see him try a few Russell Wilson back spin moves, and for no reason, like there was nobody there, but he did them. <laughs> yeah, um, we well, got to practice the move. This yeah. works for us. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I also saw the commentators say he's doing his best, Lamar Jackson, uh, in response <laughs> to one of those. Um, oh man getting outside of the pocket uh moves but the reality is this that that heavy sack uh defense of the new orleans saints very heavy um they were going to demolish carson wentz they were going to crush him and uh jalen hurts at least can get out of the pocket uh can do something with his legs and I, i think this is good for the eagles chances 
All right. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, it seemed like it was coming. Yeah. Spontaneous congratulations. Hey, Adam Reich here. You guys stink. Thank no, you. I'm kidding. I didn't want to take an opportunity to congratulate you on episode 1000. That's amazing. You know, so many times people in this, in- people come up to me and they're like, hey, man, I want to do what you do. Not a lot of people do it. And not only have you guys done it, You've exceeded most people, including myself. So I congratulate mm. you. Wish you continued success and can't wait to see what you guys have cooked up next. I'm going to be honest. I like show 1000 quite a bit. <laughs> this has been, this has been great. Thank you. Adam. It's weird because every time uh, they start talking, I feel kind of embarrassed, but then by the end, I feel like hold it together. Yeah. yeah we got to hold <laughs> you can't do this. Um, well, I, look, right. I'm, thank you, Adam. That was very nice of Adam, especially considering. Oh no, I knocked him out of the playoffs in yeah. his league. Eat it, Adam. <laughs> I knew it was coming there. Wait, All right, this year or last year? Both. Oh, that's right. We uh, <laughs> oh we took gosh. him out last year. That's right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait, boom shakalaka. I, I I just figured you if you're gonna if you're gonna dunk on him, I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm going to lean in there. All right, James Conner. He plans to play against the Bills, so we need to follow that this week coming off of COVID, and uh, we'll see what happens. Antonio Gibson diagnosed with a painful case of turf toe. It is very unlikely that Antonio Gibson will play this week. He was projected for points early on in this on most platforms. He's not playing. That's just to rub it in. That's right, the, so the, that he can take him away. Yes, yeah, so that they can make me feel even worse about the situation. The Turf toe. Antonio Gibson is going to be knocked out a few weeks, and then even w- when he comes back, let, let's say he comes back in week 16 somehow, he's going to be hobbled. Turf toe sucks, yeah. especially for a running back. If he was active this week, would you even feel? No. Yeah, like I, playing? I, I, no. Okay, uh, Kyle Shanahan suggested both Jimmy G and George Kittle need more time before they can think about coming off of injured reserve. So will we see them again this year? Only, this is only a situation of if, if you know, the last week or two of the season, week 16, week 17, um, if they're in the playoff hunt and they still have a fully legitimate shot, um, you know, th- this is a team where if they actually got healthy and snuck in the playoffs, then they're they're an absolute contender, uh, even though they've, you know, had such a difficult season. Joe Mixon, eligible to return this week. I know the team believes he'll be back and playing. Oh, do they? I haven't seen anything yeah. about Joe Mixon. It, it kind of surprised me. I have a league where I have Frank Gore and Antonio Gibson, who started for me last week. Oof. And Oof. Uh, not a lot of depth on the waiver wire. And I'm looking on my bench. i got Joe Mixon. He's been sitting on IR. And I was happy to see that report. Now, he could be back out there. For, for that team, I'm playing Joe Mixon. Uh, yeah, uh, I was going to say that when, when you've been as conservative with the health of him as they have, this isn't a – all right, he's finally just barely ready to get back out on the field. We'll, we'll ease him in situation. I would be really surprised at that. This seems like they're waiting until he's – and this is what they said. They're going to wait until he's 100% healthy right. and he's ready to go. So when he's back, he should be put into the, the Bengals lineup um, as normal. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to get a great Joe Mixon game. They uh, what, What's their offensive – tackle like uh who was injured uh, Whitworth no Jonah or, um, uh, <laughs> you went to the, I went old, to the Rams old, Jonah Williams old team thank yeah. you uh, I believe he just went on IR today so he's going to be out obviously they have no quarterback they do there. have a great matchup though the Dallas, Are you? The Dallas Cowboys I, I'm oh, playing him mercy. without question if he's active now I, I want to be clear I'm not reporting that Joe Mixon has been activated from IR and is playing this week but if he is I think you can play him uh we talked about it yesterday Cam Akers Sean McVay says he expects him to play on Thursday night. It's against the Patriots. It still is not a I'm not I'm not trying to play Cam Akers this week. I'm trying not to. I think he's a flex option. Sure. Yeah, I mean, 63% of the snaps, that's by far the highest he had, uh, had that he had ever seen. But this is the Rams. 78% of the attempts. I know. We, we say I that know. every week for a different running back. And you know me, I love Cam Akers, but on a short week with a shoulder injury against the Patriots defense, sure. who just shut out the Chargers, I'm not trying. I'm not excited. I, yeah. I understand flex might be fine, and maybe you don't have another option. But just laying it all out there. All right, we have a mystery segment coming up. Yeah. But speaking of celebration, let's celebrate today's sponsor, Omaha. Oh, Omaha. It's yes. the holiday season. It's been a long time coming. 
Make it dude, worth dude. the wait. Send the perfect gift. Send yourself something special. Like Omaha a knows for you. Omaha knows what we're all about. A one for me. Look, you can't spell meat without me. Oh, oh that very is nice. very good. Uh, look, they've got check this out. The Deluxe Grillers Assortment features Omaha steaks, butchers cut filet mignons, as well as tons of incredible meats, amazing sides, and infamous, infamous Omaha steak desserts. Oh, there's caramel apple tartlets. Oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> and right now, you can get the Deluxe Grillers Assortment plus four free burgers, a free digital meat thermometer, and at an exclusive price available only to our listeners. Go to omahasteaks.com, enter the code FOOTBALLERS into the search bar. You'll get the burgers, the extra gift. We love Omaha Steaks. We love the holiday it's season. It's perfect for show 1000. Let's just it, put it, it that way. It it's is. a celebration. And it, there's no better way meat. to celebrate us and <laughs> food without, look, Omaha Steaks. Don't forget, when you order the Deluxe Grillers Assortment, you'll also get fr uh, four free Omaha Steak Burgers, the free digital meat thermometer with our code FOOTBALLERS at omahasteaks.com. Visit omahasteaks.com, type FOOTBALLERS into the search bar to shop gourmet grill packs today. Get ahead of holiday gift shopping and have a great season. You know what goes great with a nice steak. I do, Jason. Uh, Why don't you tell everybody else, though? A glass of wine, and it goes great with just about everything as well, and we want to thank First Leaf because First Leaf is the way to do it. You saw Des Bryant having a glass of wine after he was oh. removed from the football game. Hopefully he had First Leaf. I hope he knows about First Leaf because they're delivering high-quality wines from around the world to your door, and the best part is, is they match up the wines to what you like and they know wines better than you do. That's just the truth. At least they know wines better than I do. I stand in a grocery aisle and look at a. I'm like, I don't, I don't know what. These I'll take are. that one. I'll take a fine this one. <laughs> yes, you go, you, you go to First Leaf, and you take a quiz that you you say what you like, what you don't like, what you you know, are you a red wine, a white wine, a sweet, a dry, whatever you like. They are going to put it together and send it right to your door. You use the feedback to improve your future shipments and, and results. I've, I've really loved the process. You'll like it with all of your meals. Join today with our link. You're going to get six hand-picked bottles of wine for $29.95 plus free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers. That's six bottles of wine for only $5 a bottle and free shipping at tryfirstleaf.com slash Footballers join the 100,000 plus people who are already enjoying the most personalized wine club. <laughs> liar, liar, pants on fire. Footballers oh. edition. Oh, no. Owl. So we're playing some liar, liar. Not me. This is Ballers versus Borg. Oh, the Borg Ogan, the editor in chief. Okay, so if you're not familiar. Uh, Foot Clan with the Liar Liar segment. This is the best segment that we do, um, but we do it on the Spitballers comedy podcast, which you should go download and listen to this uh, coming off season, um, where there are two truths and a lie, and yep. we have to determine what the lie is. Let's see if Kyle is as good as Jeremy. All right. Well, this is fun. All right, let's do this. The first... Like, so what are we doing? Three rounds there, yes. Alborn? Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, the first round is 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 titled. Well, Mike, do you want to take this? He's my number one guy. He's my number one guy. All right. The first uh, fact, or or we'll see, or it could be a lie. <laughs> Doug Martin, aka Krampus. Uh, oh, and thank you for reminding me. One of my guys from 2017. I tried to warn you. He hasn't played a snap. <laughs> You were like, he eats kids, Andy. Uh, he hasn't played a snap in the NFL since 2018. He has more 100 rushing yard games over the last three oh, seasons. My goodness! Than Alvin Kamara. What? That can't be true. So oh that's, my goodness! That's our uh, fact number one. Okay. So even though he hasn't played since 2018, he has more 100 yards games on the ground. So, rushing. Yes, rushing. I that's, saw that. Uh, yep. That's the important word. All right. All right. Number two. Despite not registering his first top 12 wide receiver weekly performance until four years into the league. Cole Beasley has more top 12 weeks since 2015 than Alshon Jeffrey. I choose to believe this no matter what. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. anti Alshon. You, you can tell me that this – no, it's this is a pro Cole Beasley. Well, I certainly buy the, uh, you know, four four years before registering a top 12 week with Cole Beasley. That was a slow ascent for him. 
And then fact number three, if you were to combine all the passing touchdowns thrown by slot wide, oh, re- sleep, slot wide receivers in 2020, it would be as many passing touchdowns as Cam Newton has this year. I feel like that has to be true. Jarvis. I know Jarvis Cole, has. Uh, Beckham? Beckham. Oh, no, no. He said slot wide receivers. Huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you said did, Beasley, right? Yeah. Did Jerry Slayton. I don't, I don't know if you would consider remember. him or not, but one of the Giants threw one. No matter I whether this is true or false, the point Cam is Newton Cam- has five <laughs> passing touchdowns this year. That's the headline to me. So all right. what's troubling is that all three of these seem like it's certainly possible. Alvin Kamara, he, he makes his hay in the passing game, so yes. we know that there could be some interesting stats with 100-yard rushing games. Cole Beasley... You know Mike's going to lock that one in. Yeah, I, I have to I have to choose to believe that that is true no matter what the output here. I will go – I'm going to take the Doug Martin one as the – As the, the lie. lie. Yeah, I know Doug Martin – I'm trying to remember. He had that – he had a little bit of a hot streak there at the end as a Raider, but I can't remember exactly what happened. I'm going to lock in number three as the lie, the passing touchdown numbers compared to slot wide receivers. I'm going to guess that number's like four uh, – so that's the one I'm going to lock in. Yeah, I'm going to go with you there as well. When we started actually thinking about which slot wide receivers have thrown a touchdown this season, I couldn't get to five, and at least that's recent. I can't imagine number one being a lie because it seems like there's so much work that you're proud of this stat. Right. And so you don't <laughs> want to be like, I just made this up. <laughs> okay, why, what's the truth? What's the answer? The lie is the Beasley Jeffrey stat. Oh, my gosh. No, See, no. Yeah, but I was going to... No. So we whiffed. Stop the count. No. Okay. <laughs> we whiffed. Full whiff. All right. What a great start. Let's move on to our next one. Number two. All right. Speaking of number two, here, here are the three facts for this question. Uh, speaking of number two, Adam Gase has been a head coach in the NFL longer than the Fantasy Footballers YouTube channel has existed. Mm, head coach. So that's head coach. Mm, okay. Mm, okay. Okay. Number two, Frank Gore secured his first ever top twelve fantasy performance, rushing for two touchdowns, the same <laughs> weekend that the movie Hong Kong. No, King Kong. Oh, what did I say? Hong Kong. Well, okay. That's not a movie. Hong, what you, Hong, that's that a movie location. sucks. <laughs> uh, King Kong, directed by Peter Jackson, the the Jack Black version, not the not the OG <laughs> King uh, Kong. Well, you can. I mean, you could relay your former statement on. That movie sucked. <laughs> okay. The OG? Yeah. Well. Sorry, Peter Jackson. Yeah. Uh, well, it hit number one in the box office charts when it released. So, did Frank Gore secure his first ever top 12 fantasy performance, rushing for two touchdowns the same weekend that King Kong came out? It's very possible. Came out? Possible. I, I feel like Gore's been around longer, though. Than the first King Kong? Not the first one. The Peter Jackson, yeah, Jack well, Black for, one. I don't count the, the you one You don't count in... the original King Kong as a movie? The no. one that... The King first Kong I, exists because of? Yeah, that's an iconic, like, cinematic thing. Yeah, so is Citizen Kane. Look, if you decide that Jack right. Black is part of the or origins of King Kong, you've got a problem. Number three, this season every single wide receiver has a, at least one weekly finish. Wait, what is this? This season every single wide receiver has had at least one weekly finish of wide receiver 50 or worse. What do you mean every single wide receiver? That, that means there is not a wide receiver in the league who has been in the top 50 every single week of the okay. season. Okay, all right. I'm following now. Yeah. <laughs> who would be in the running for that? Who would be that As in the consistent? ones that haven't done it? Uh, uh, yes, as as in who has Stephon not. Stephon Diggs. That was the first name that came to my mind as well. I, I can't remember a game outside of the top 50. I don't even 50. know if Hopkins' games have been outside the top 50. They, ha- he's they have? Okay. Yeah, he's had some outside the top 50. Mm. Tyreek Hill? No, Tyreek Hill. Outside the top 50? Tyreek Hill has been incredible. Has he had a game outside? Wow. All right. That's tough. I mean, I'm going with with the Adam Gase has been a head coach longer than our YouTube channel. I feel like I remember when he became a head coach. Yes. And that means that would be a lot. Wait, do we draw our power from him as a head coach? I sure hope not because it's not (laughs) lasting much longer. This could be the last show. I I think number three is a lie. We are thermally powered. I don't think every single wide receiver has had at least one finish outside the top I'm going to lock that in as well. Let's see if we can whiff together. Yeah, I mean, Tyree Kill and (laughs) Stephon Diggs, come on. 
The lie is Adam Gase. Oh my oh. gosh! All right, I'm in the lead. So we don't need him for our power. No, that's well, that's great news. Thank goodness for that. I mean, Jason, I, stop agreeing with me. It's uh, not working. Apparently. Oh. <laughs> Spontaneous congratulations. This episode, man. <laughs> What's up, you guys? It's Austin Eckler here. Just want to give a shout out to the fantasy footballers and say congratulations on 1,000 episodes. That's awesome. Looking forward to some more content. Keep it going. Mr. Eckler! Good friend of the show. Awesome, Rick. excellent. Even now best friend of the show, I dare say. Yeah, that's pretty great. Thank you, awesome Eckler. Spectacular. Continue to be awesome. All right. Week six, Tyreek Hill was the wide receiver 66. Oh, there it is. Man. Drats. Man. All right. We have one more. Yep. One more two truths and a lie here. Uh, number one, after digging through crude audio clips and manuscripts in the <laughs> annals of footballers' lore, Jason has selected more tight end my guys than Andy and Mike combined. Wow. Since my guys' inception before the 2015 season. Hmm. So they, that's just saying he selected tight ends more frequently than you or I? Yes. I, I don't know if I've ever taken a tight end. I can't remember the the year that. I know he's. I know Jason's taken Trey Burton. Yeah, that's the only one I can think. I of also right now. believe he probably took. Uh, who am I thinking of from the the Saints? Kobe. Oh Fleener? yes, Kobe oh, Fleener. Totally. Yes, this is dude. true. His lunch without is question. Locks. Yes, because the the only one I could think of is is when I was madly in love with Travis Kelsey, like the first year. Sure, and then he didn't bring. He didn't Kobe. have the breakout until the next year. All right. The number two uh, fact here. In true Reaper fashion, Andy has the fewest my guys left <laughs> on an active NFL roster dating back to 2015. That's a fun stat. All right. So that you like guys I, at the end of their career. Well, I, or not or necessarily. You bring, the or show's you been bring, around a while. Or you bring about the end of their career by liking I them. I think that's... That's, you're onto something, Jason. I feel like that's probably true. <laughs> All right, number three, the team with the uh, most official nicknames in the history of the fantasy footballers is the Seattle Seahawks. I don't like that. Well, uh, we had uh, Fred Jackson, right? Yeah, but he got his nickname on the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, but he, yeah, but I mean, he, was, he a was a Seahawk. Seahawk when we were talking about him. The uh, depth chart assassin, by the way. Yes. Uh, we've got uh, the woke one. Pe Peach Cobbler. Oh, Pe the woke one, too. Peach, Peach Cobbler. Uh, Kristen Michael was uh, Peach Cobbler is Pete Carroll. Yeah, <laughs> it is now. Uh, Kyle has said the official nicknames are Hot Locket. Are per yeah okay are per the Footy Russell Award nominations. Wilson. Now that's what my question: Did Russell Wilson <laughs> make it onto an actual ballot? Yeah, he did. Unlimited. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. I think that one is true. I think that one is. Dang, true. that makes it tough. Then I'm gonna say that number two is the lie. Andy has the fewest my guys left on an active NFL roster dating back to 2015. I don't think you're actually the Reaper here. I'm I'm going with that one as well. All right, I'll go with the number one, uh, the tight end my guys, and and think that maybe we forgot one. But what is the answer, Brooks? The ans the lie is the Reaper one. Oh, yes. yes. Right. See? I think that means I won. That is just only true. We factually. don't keep score of things here on the <laughs> Fantasy Footballers <laughs> Podcast. That's not part of our history. All Congratulations, right. me. All right, we're moving on. Oh. Spontaneous congratulations. Andy, Mike, Jason, it's Matt Harmon here. I just wanted to send you guys a massive congratulations on 1,000 episodes. This milestone is awesome. I can remember during the summer of 2016 on my cross-country trip stopping by to do a show with you all in person in Phoenix, Arizona, and... Just watching you guys then, I remember thinking, man, this is not a podcast. These guys are, are literally building an empire. I was right then, and I'm sure as hell right now. Congrats on this. You all are the best. I appreciate you for being not just a part of this community, but also a part of my life and letting me join you to be a small, small part of this thing you guys got going here. Love you guys. Congrats. Thank you, Mr. Harmon. That is that is a true, if you want a fantasy footballer's trivia fact, yeah. we have... <clears throat> There's been many guests on this show, uh, football players, fantasy football industry uh, experts. Celebrities. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that was that was celebrity. 
<laughs> it's like a, uh, I think that's how Bruno said it. Oh. Say it again. Oh, is that a celebritized? There's a Bruno okay. reference. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good deep cut. Uh, but Matt Harmon is the only guest who has ever done an in studio ap- appearance. That's right. Is that true? Yeah. You don't remember that? Well, I do remember it because we were in the bedroom and it was miniaturized. Yes. The space that we had. Um, thank you, Matt. Yeah. Thank his, you. Matt. He, did his voice sound a little deeper than normal there? He's a grown boy. Ah. I mean, he just sounded. <laughs> He's a man now. He's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> when we met him, he was just a child. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Matt. So next up, guys, we're going to get into to some mailbag questions. we got a good mix of fantasy playoff questions and some frequently asked footballers okay. questions. But we have a special quick montage, uh, mailbag drop <laughs> montage to lead into that. Okay. So it's going to start with the very first filmed mailbag drop oh my. of all time. And it's ending with a live mailbag drop. So be ready, Mike. All right. Mailbag. Mailbag. Very nice. I'm always amped after that. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) That didn't sound amped. (laughs) Mailbag. Yeah. This is going to be fun. Wait, that's actually you that does that? That's not part of the drama? Now you know. That's live. Now you know. (laughs) This is. Oh, it's the mailbag. We needed your best. <laughs> we needed your best today. It turned into the mail baggy. Oh, I liked it. <laughs> mail baggy. Okie dokie. Mail bag. Oh, Jason. I tried. Mail bag. I forgot it. <laughs> mail bag. That's the best one right yeah. there. <laughs> mail bag. Yeah. Thank you. Gave me a little extra that pep. That's incredible. Powered by meat. <laughs> incredible. <laughs> <laughs> mailbag mailbag 1000 wow wow that was incredible well done guys uh now i cannot confirm nor deny this but this is how i remember it this is a fantasy footballer show we are remembering this so owl borland who is now one of our fearless producers was essentially like fan number one no for, doubt no for doubt. the fantasy footballers he supported us when our downloads were one. Yes. One per it episode it because him. it was him. Our parents refused to download the show. Yeah. Only Al Borland. But we had the mailbag drop. And the way I remember it is he told me, he's like, when the, the ending tagline hits, the, the bear now now, he's like, I sing mailbag in my head. Really? And really? You were remembering that correctly. Yes. So the, uh, the origin of the mailbag singing was because of Al Borland mentioning something. And it took 1,000 episodes to give him credit. Well, look, I try to keep my secrets close to the vest. Very, Im- <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, uh, awesome. I awesome. assume the royalty check's in the mail. Yeah, yeah it- we gave you a job, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we gave you a job. I All assume right. my paycheck's in the mail? <laughs> Eventually, yeah. All right, we've got some mailbag. Uh, I'm excited about this. The first question comes in from a Foot Clan member, Blade Blaker. <laughs> Blake, Blake Blaker. Blaker. Okay. Uh, yo, yo. Hi. Hey. Bonjour oh. from Canada Ballers. Bonjour. Bonjour. Heading into my playoffs, should I ride with Kyler Murray, even with the past mm. three weeks disappointing, or with a streamer? Thank you for all the hard work, fellas. Well, this is this is a tough one because of several factors. Number one, they are facing a formidable, impressive uh, of late Giants defense this week. Mm-hmm. Kyler could be dealing with prolonged issues due to injury. I I retweeted this tweet that showed DeAndre Hopkins' route tree. Oh. Over the last – this ain't even a tree. It's this a, is a route bush. It's, I mean, it's this a, is – It's is, a route bush. It's not a tree. It's a picture of vomit. Yeah, it's like, you know, run between 5 and 10 yards on the left side of the field. And is this a product of the shoulder? Is this the, the route that he can throw right now? I don't know what's going on in Arizona, but I don't like it. When you- I, I will say this. Uh, while Kyler has had two back-to-back ba- poor weeks, bad weeks for fantasy football, um, you know, those, those were the New England Patriots and the Los Angeles Rams. I'm not taking anything away from the New York Giants who have been playing some good football on defense, but they are not in the tier of the Los Angeles Rams. And I am not personally afraid of them. If Kyler got me to the playoffs, Kyler's in my line. Well, look at Russell Wilson last week. 
this this is a road game for the Arizona Cardinals. They are in New York. The Cardinals historically <laughs> they, don't travel. Like, no one really travels well from the the West Coast to the East Coast because you're you, playing him over Tannehill. No, who's been your your that's my your, question. Your is, best friend, you know, a streamer who might actually be available, would have been Ryan Tannehill. Now Ryan Tannehill, Jacksonville, Detroit, Green Bay. No, uh, so that's what would that was the next that? thing I was going to say is. You know, we we had our streamers yesterday, our waiver wire show, and we assumed that Tannehill was no longer out there. We said if you picked him up last week, certainly keep rolling with him. If I have Tannehill and Kyler, I am going Tannehill this week. Um, but outside of that, all the streaming options we gave on yesterday's show. Are you playing Kyler over Josh Allen against Pittsburgh? Ooh, the way yes. Josh Allen yes, is playing right now. Yes, I am. You playing him over Tom Brady against Minnesota? Yes, I am. That one didn't sound as confident. I'm not confident about either. But Justin I Herbert against Atlanta? I would probably go with Herbs. All right. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. I'm so discouraged. At, I almost want the answer to be that he's hurt. Because if he's not hurt, and this is the battle plan for the Cardinals. Doesn't work. We've we've seen three, Cliff. three straight games of Kyler Murray only rushing five times. Yeah, yeah. All right, question number two. Footballer's question: How did you guys meet? People do ask this question all the time. Uh, Andy and I met all the way back in high school when he first got to high school and goes to his freshman Spanish class. He yeah, saw it was a this, freshman class. He saw this upperclassman in his freshman Spanish class because I refused to take Spanish to that time. I also dropped out halfway through that class. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't handle the freshman course. I I never took Spanish and used it as my deficiency to get into college because. It wasn't for me. Uh, <laughs> the language. <laughs> Say, uh, your, your primary language. Not really for you. Right. <laughs> language. <laughs> language is a difficult thing for me. Um, so we met then, and we actually met playing fantasy basketball. That's kind of what and started real basketball. the relationship. And then uh, we reconnected after, uh, long after high school, even after college. I had a business that uh, I was running. Uh, that at that point made MySpace layouts and oh, designs. Yeah. MySpace. And then I ran into Andy, who was doing graphic design work, and brought him on. And then you grew as the company grew. You became the COO, uh, did everything. Um, and then we made video games. Mm -hmm. We changed to a video game company. And Mike, the fantasy hitman right, was an unbelievable and is an unbelievable audio mastermind who could make every song necessary, every sound effect necessary, and he was a one-man audio team for our company that we brought on, and once we were there, all we ever talked about was fantasy football. Yeah. Accurate. Yeah, and Mike Mike is uh, was extraordinary in that role, and I noticed from those vintage mailbag drops, very consistent. Oh, I well, mean, thank you. From thank the you. first one until now, you haven't lost it yet, Mike. N not yet. Your workouts, are they're working. Uh, question number three from Nick in Chicago. He says he has Josh Allen in the Steelers' defense. What do and. I do? Mm. Okay, so Josh Allen, I think we've we've kind of exhausted this. We're playing Josh Allen. You can't you, you can't extinguish those those flames right now. But Andy, you have the Steelers' defense. You in league of record, right? Yeah, I do. Against are you? you? Are you playing the Steelers' yeah. defense against me? Yeah, I am. And I, am I, I'm not excited. I'm not thrilled. I would be completely content with them under normal circumstances without the injuries they've suffered recently. That being said, Josh Allen is still willing to provide some stumbling, bumbling mistakes. Sure. It's the Steelers. It looked like that they were a bad play against Baltimore earlier this year. It was one of their best performances. I'm going to dance with the, the defense I've that got me to the playoffs. Yeah, I, I think I would stick with the Steelers' defense. That being said, if you have both of these, I understand why you're thinking that way. You're saying, okay, if Josh Allen does well, then my defense does poorly, and you're not wrong. I mean, if, if he sets the world on fire, you do lose some ceiling playing both of them. So if you're a maybe a huge underdog and you'd rather play a higher... You'd... Well, which one would you pivot? Would you pivot off of Josh Allen or would you pivot off of the Steelers? If I'm going to pivot off of one, it's going to be the Steelers. Yeah, so let I think me, so. I'm going to throw out a couple options for you guys. We talked about them on the waiver wire, but Steelers defense or 
Carolina, the Carolina Panthers against Drew Locke and company, the Denver Broncos. No, I'm not playing Carolina's defense. There's no way. Yeah, that that's a really close one to me, but I would stick with the Steelers in that situation. Okay, the Steelers or the Arizona Cardinals against the New York Giants and either a hobbled Daniel Jones or backup Colt McCoy. Uh, I'm gonna, I, I guess I'm just playing the Steelers. Yeah, all right. I, I think the only team that might be out there um, that you could pick up and play and I would play over the Steelers would be the Seattle Seahawks whose defense has improved drastically over the last couple of weeks, and they're playing against the New York Jets. I will say this. It is not a bad thing that the Steelers lost to Washington for your defense this week. Yeah, that's true. A little bit of a chip on their shoulder coming into this game. Uh, I, the locker room was probably a scary place to be with Mike Tomlin after that defeat. So uh, we'll see what happens. Question number four. Why did you start the podcast? So we started the podcast uh, originally. It was just myself and Andy. We started it for our league of record, and we just wanted to take our our league to the next level. We're always trying to uh, amplify the fun for our league of record, live drafts, announcers at the draft, uh, punishments, banners, T-shirts, custom mini helmets, and we thought, okay, well, let's go with a podcast. So we did that. We put that out once a week, and then we said, hey, we're kind of good at this. Let's try Actually, it. Jason let's... said we're kind of good at this. Okay, that was Jason the irony. Said. He said, okay, this is pretty, this is pretty I uh, knew, good. I knew you guys had something special. I came to Andy once, and I said, this, this thing's going to be big. And Andy said, oh, you really think so? I said, no, I, I know that this, will, that this will work. And then we made, we, we made a podcast for the public, and we were no longer good. We were, in fact, really bad. <laughs> uh and we took some reps. We eventually said, hey, we need to get a third voice in here. We did. And and then Jason was invited to the podcast. On that note. Breaking news. Well, it's been a while. We said we were going to do this at five years, Andy. And we have a story to tell you, Mike, about how I came on to this podcast <laughs> that you don't know about. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What an episode well, well, 1000. Well, 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 well. All okay. right. The so secrets are the coming secrets out. The secrets are coming out. We legitimately said we'll tell them in five years. Yeah. And here's the moment. Live on the air. Okay. <laughs> so you two had this podcast going, and it was great. And I thought I, – I said I think this was great, and right. but I never wanted to be a, a part of it, never thought about being a part of it. Andy thought I would like to have a third voice and, and bring Jason in. So I don't know if you remember how I came in, but it was actually you're doing. But Andy, out of respect for you, did not want. He knew if he came and said, I want, I want Jason in, that you would be forced to say yes. Right. Okay. So he, Did I get inceptioned? You got inceptioned. <laughs> you got, you got super inceptioned. inceptioned. <laughs> so, instead, so instead, Andy says, if you want to be a part, you need to go ask Mike if he would, you know, you bring it up. So I came to you, Mike, and said, hey. If you ever wanted a third voice, you know, I could bring, you know, the stuff I do for right. business and that, um, I would, I would be willing. You said, you know, I think that would be a good idea. I like it. And then you said to me, but I've got to make sure Andy's okay with it. And when you said that to me, it was the funniest moment <laughs> because it was Andy's idea that was inceptioned in, but out of respect for and you, we made it. And then you came to me and said, hey, I've got this. What do you think about this? And I was like, I think that's a pretty good idea. Well, that's great, then. And that's how we became a team. Yeah. Yeah. At least. It, oh. oh. <laughs> Spontaneous congratulations. I have a fantasy. <laughs> oh. And it involves... Three footballers. Adam left can you name them? I can. Andy, Mike, Jason. Delicious. <laughs> Boys, left go. I am so proud of you. 1,000. That is insane. I love you so much. And I cannot wait until I'm in the same studio sweating with you <laughs> legends. Congrats, boys. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I sweat a lot when I was in studio with Adam Lecko. <laughs> I mean, a lot. That's a clip for another time, but you definitely want to check that out. Thank you, Adam. We appreciate you. Uh, yeah, so you got inceptioned, Mike. 
I guess. Or maybe I already had that idea and you didn't know about it. And I said, in 10 years, I'm going to tell Andy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Wait for episode 2000. Oh, spectacular. All right. We've got another question here uh, from uh, Unlimited Butterface, Foot Clan supporter. Long time Foot Clan supporter. Yeah, what up, Butterface? Uh, it says, Logan Thomas, with all the recent volume and success, or Robert Tunyon, with his nice schedule and mm. recent touchdowns for weeks 15 and 16. What do you think? Robert Tunyon, Logan Thomas. Boy, it's it's hard not to chase that volume that you've seen from Logan Thomas. Yeah, and, I mean, Antonio Gibson, not that he was a a target machine from Alex Smith, but we saw a few flashes of that. But And so those targets are gone. Not that J.D. McKissick can't take all of the targets. This is so tight too because both of them have three out of the last four weeks inside the top 10 at the tight end position and I I can't imagine Thomas not being part of the offense without Antonio Gibson I can see a world where like the total target numbers are a little bit lower for for Ta Tanyan oh, Tanyan Tanyan I don't know I, I guess I lean Thomas by a by a nose uh, so the way that I view this is is pretty clear to me um, the safer option, the higher floor is Logan Thomas because the target volume, uh, the snap percentage, the routes run, all of those, he, he is a more central part of a worse offense. Mm -hmm. The upside is most certainly with Tunyon. If you look at how many times these guys have been in the, you know, the top six where, where it really matters, yep. a top 10 performance at tight end is like, okay, great. Uh, you know, week six, uh, Logan Thomas was the tight end nine. Well, that, that sounds great. He was three for 42. Uh, you know, th that's, th that's not a great week. So Tunyon has the upside. So it's about matchup, right? If you are going in, you look like you're solid. It's a competitive game. You just need to not have a nothing from your tight end. I think I would go Logan Thomas. If I am playing against one of the great teams out there in the playoffs, and I really need to show up and have all my players scoring double digits, then I think I would go for the touchdown upside with, with Tunyon. I think that's, that makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. All right, we have one more question. Why do you say I love Michael Keaton in the place <laughs> of Jinx? If you've noticed on the show, if we say something at the same time, we say I love Michael and Keaton. And we actually have that clip ready to go, along with some other footballers' origins. But did you see the movie coming out with Michael Keaton? No. Where he, it is oh, a McDonald's that's right. movie. It is him. What? It, it looks great. What? It's the inception of the fast food world. And Michael what is Keaton. He, is he a uh, crook? What's his, his? No, he's not a crook. No, not a crook. Like Ray. Oh, Ray Kroc. Ray Kroc. Is that, I think it is. He's the founder of McDonald's. Yeah. Or he plays some part in the beginning of McDonald's in this movie. And it almost reminded me of a Mad Men style. Because it's back in the. All right. I'm in. I'm in. I want to. <laughs> and I, I love, love Michael Keaton. Keaton. Whoa, Whoa! Did you guys just become Jinx, best friends? Batman? Batman. <laughs> that was not goodbye for the season or his career. That was me saying goodbye from my rankings. Yeah, to his groin. No, I didn't. It wasn't to his groin. Oh, what do they call me on Twitter, Mike? <laughs> They're calling you the Fantasy Reaper, my friend. You get high in Andy's rankings, you go down. People were uh, worried yeah, about what Alan is Robinson. With this? <laughs> Every injury in, NFL, in the NFL is a Fantasy Reaper sighting. It is Thanksgiving week. Yeah, and look, they call me double stuff mostly because I'm fat. Um, am I going to be able to withstand victories for the next few weeks? Did you say withstand victories? <laughs> what does that mean? Well, I can always withstand a victory. <laughs> Five stars is titled Withstanding Victories. I have been able to withstand multiple victories <laughs> since I started listening to this podcast. What do you think it's like for a new listener to the show to hear uh, so many people reference withstanding victories? Do they just think that we are dumb? My hair is gone. For the most part. It looks My, it looks mighty fine. Well, it, thank you. Thank looks you. better than Jason looks today. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> the other news. Hey, Jason. Jason uh, Jason could not be with us this morning. It is a two no, he is. Ask him a question. Jason, how you doing? Uh, Voice of Public Opinion, what are your thoughts on this one? <laughs> there are certain offenses where someone like Kyle Shanahan or someone like uh, Adam Gase in Miami, who, by the way... Is a butthole? Wow. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> tell, tell us what you really think. How do you feel? Are you, is that because he put Kenyon Drake or Frank Gore on the it's, depth chart? It's, it's freaking nonsense. You're the starting running back. You want to give Gore carries? Fine. Just don't be a butthole. 
<laughs> there's the nickname of the year award, which is the highest honors that you can possibly get for sure from this podcast. Yes. Is Adam Gase, oh. Mr. B-Hole, going to be eligible yeah. to receive this award? He of course must he will. be eligible. Okay, of course he will. good. Yeah. B-Hole sounds a, worse uh... than you not censoring it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and he's still around, still crapping on your team. I like watching the evolution of the set. Yes. Uh, my hairstyles. Mm -hmm. Our weight. Mm -hmm. Our weight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad there were no there were no clips of me stuffed into the Batman suit from Halloween. <laughs> that was a real wake up moment in my life. Like, there are a few moments in your life where you're like, "Yeah, I got to make a change." And uh, yeah, Batman suit was one of them. <laughs> Marshmallows sticking out of the mask. All right, we're moving on. Thursday night breakdown. All right, the New England Patriots at six and six taking on the Los Angeles Rams, who are eight and four, playing some good football, and the Rams are five and a half point favorites in this one. It's a forty four and a half point over under, so we're gonna break this thing down. How complicated does it really get on the Patriots offensive side of the ball? Mm, not. And I think it gets even less complicated because look Damien Harris is, was the only spot at running back that, okay, I'll play Damien Harris. Maybe he gets enough work. He's not going to get the touchdowns, but maybe he gets enough work. It's a plus matchup. No, it is not a plus matchup this week against the Los Angeles Rams over the course of the season. They are the sixth worst matchup for fantasy running backs. The Los Angeles Rams defense is elite. Up against this Patriots offense, who they are, they are completely one-dimensional. The Rams have to stop one thing, and that's Damian Harris running, or that is Cam Newton running. Running. I mean, yeah. you, you you don't have to worry about the passing attack from Cam Newton at this point. So I, I this might be. I think this is the. This is a no Patriots. I week. think this is the easiest matchup uh, as far as the Patriots side of the ball of the year. Every time we say, I think there's nobody to play from this team. There's like, well, you can put Logan Thomas, right. in, or you know, it's usually a tight end. Dallas Goddard, you might play from the Eagles. I cannot imagine starting a single player, including Cam Newton, who, yes, he can get it done on the ground, but I don't believe that that's going to be true against Aaron Donald, against this defense that's, you know, number one against quarterbacks, top 10 against running backs, top 10 against wide receivers. They are an elite of elite. And this is one of those things where if you take the average of Patriots offensive weapons and then you subtract a couple of points because of the matchup, you're like, I, I don't mean, want that. Their average is below average. I don't want below, below average. That's <laughs> called failing. So I don't think there is one single Patriot I am willing to plug in my lineup this week. Period. No, it feels like you'd be threading the eye of a needle in mm -hmm. this one, trying to get... With one shot at it. Yeah, with one shot. And New England, they slow the, they slow the game down, 31st in pace of play. Uh, on the other side, uh, King Goff, Free and Company. I still... You heard me talk about... Cam Akers. I understand that you can play him. Like, if you're going to play a running back on this team, that's who I play. Patriots are figuring some things out. They're figuring out what the recipe is to win ball games, slow the game down, um, try to control the line of scrimmage. Akers is a flex option, I think, but you are not. I don't think there's a huge ceiling for him in this game. You always play Woods and Cup, mm -hmm. but I don't think I want to throw Jared Goff out there in desperation mode at all. Jared Goff is maddening for fantasy purposes because he will you you never know which Jared Goff is going to show up. You know I mean you you never know which Los Angeles Rams offense Unless he plays the is Cardinals. going to show up. Well, yeah, 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 but the Cardinals, but I'm saying like against Tampa Bay week 11. You're like, oh, on the road Tampa Bay? No, thank you, Jared Goff. Quarterback 3. The week before that versus Seattle at home, oh, this is about as good as the matchup could possibly get. You know, they're 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 bleeding points to the quarterbacks, wide receivers, and quarterback twenty two. Yeah, on that week, you, this it's there is so no. You're saying start Jared Goff because <laughs> no, it appears to no, be a bad matchup. No, I am saying you you cannot take Jared Goff at a face value for matchup because just because a matchup is good does not mean he will show up. Just because it's bad does doesn't mean he will be bad. But this is hands off for me. For Jared Goff is out of my lineup if I can help it at all. Yeah, I expect this to be a <laughs> spontaneous. Congratulations! 
Hey guys, it's Matthew Barry, and I just want to take a quick moment here to congratulate you, not only on a thousand episodes, but everything you guys have accomplished. It is not easy to sit down in a small room in front of a microphone and entertain and inform thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people, and you guys have managed to do it for 999 episodes. I'm assuming this one's a clunker. Anyway, guys, <laughs> it's been a pleasure seeing you guys rise. I'm a fan of you guys. I consider all of you friends, and I'm thrilled for your success. Here's to a thousand more. Dang, man. Thank you, Mr. Barry. Thank that you, means Mr. that means a lot. He is Dang. He is the he is the top of the industry. Wow. Yeah, that uh that one's a really cool. Really cool. Thank you, sir. Yeah, appreciate it. <sighs> I also like it when those cut us off in mid sentence. So well done. I Al. Can't, that makes it more entertaining for me. I can't imagine how much fun oh, they yeah. are having back there with these interruptions. No, no. This is it once every thousand episodes you get to do this, all right? <laughs> Uh, a reminder to take your Thursday night players out of the flex spot. It's very important, uh, especially with the various COVID-type situations mm -hmm. you can get yourself into, and it's the playoffs. So do not forget it. That'll wrap up our Thursday night breakdown. And we have one final segment. Of course oh, we do. Man. Now introducing the top five moments in fantasy footballers' history oh. so far. That's right. We asked on social media and to the official Foot Clan on jointhefoot.com asking for their favorite moments of history. So oh. Let's count down the top five. Oh, my gosh. Number five. All right. So we are going to get into the waivers. Now, uh, <laughs> before we do that, we, we've had some curiosity here at the studio. Uh, we, we've, you know, sometimes we get oh. in here in the morning, you know, and it, it's darker out now. Yeah. You, it's tougher to wake up. You guys are throwing the coffee back in the morning. And we made the joke. We're like, you should probably get some smelling salts because mm -hmm. you see them on the sidelines oh, in the yeah. NFL games. And we are athletes of our own, yes, right? We in are our own, right? We are vocal athletes. That's so true. Al Borland has, uh, <clears throat> has acquired some smelling salts for us. <laughs> and this is a pretty big <laughs> waiver. This is a really important show. Pretty big waiver show. Yeah, get hyped. You All guys right. want to get it? Yeah. Get Al little... Barlin, could you give us oh, a... Oh, I, I snapped it. Oh, the premature snap. Oh, that's not a premature give snap. Us a, give us a three count, Owl. Holy. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Three, two, oh, one. Oh, oh, don't. Oh, oh golly. Oh, oh moly. Oh, I'm riding the lightning, oh. baby. <laughs> Let's go. It's oh, waiver time. <laughs> Put me in, coach. Oh, baby. Mike. Let me tell you all of the waivers that you need. <laughs> Mike's, oh. Mike's eyes are, are Woo. watering. Woo. Uh, that was um, that was intense. I got to get back in. Woo. <laughs> my my yeah. sinuses are clear. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. brother. Well, that's why th those do. Uh, it's a different experience than I expected. Yeah. It Not was, exactly potpourri. It was weird because at first it's like there's nothing oh, yeah. here. It didn't hit. And, and then it was like, oh, the inside of my skull's on fire. <laughs> okay, I get it. Uh, yeah. It felt like a little man was doing jumping jacks in my nostrils. Uh, so n n none of us have ever, Ooh, uh, never done that before. That. No. And Mike, you mentioned that, that it must be pretty effective if it can bring people that are passed out yeah. back to life. Yes. You guys believe that was five? I, I'm I'm pretty shocked. So that ended up at, at number five. Well, recency bias. Yeah, look, I, but I, that was a special moment. I remember that happening, like it was a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if all these moments are from the last two weeks, <laughs> this is gonna be a problem. What's number four? Number four. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. Hey, hey, hey. Throwing in a few lyrics for the theme song today. <laughs> Those Welcome are actually in. the words. The, people don't know this. Well, you did write it, so. People don't know that the Fantasy Footballers theme song <laughs> has, it has words. It's called, it's football time. Yeah. That's the name of the song. And that's the, that's it. That's it. You just, you fit it in where you can fit it in and then scream, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's football time again. Hey, hey, already. It's football time! <laughs> it's football time, yeah! It's kind of football time! Oh! It's football time! Yeah! 
little bit brain. I didn't have enough characters. I ran out. I ran out of syllables, fellas. You went syllable choice versus coherent sentence. Ah, welcome in. It's football time. Hey, 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 yeah, hey. Oh, well, my goodness. There we go. You found the first one. Between the mailbag drop compilation and then that one, I Mike has a very specific role here that I've, he is dominating. I have always... A little bit hype. I've I have always pigeonholed myself as the hype man of the show. And, and you, you're wearing a pink suit today, so I really can't complain. Get hyped. Very nice. So the uh, It's Football Time comes in at number four? Yes, sir. Very nice. All right, number three. Number three. Having said that, Jason, would you play Kirk Cousins or Philip Rivers? <laughs> Is it, come on, man. <laughs> oh, fuck, man. Uh, so, <laughs> Philip Rivers, who I hate now. I didn't, but last week I made him my start of the week, and he looked terrible. He looked washed. He looked <laughs> awful Is and was on my team. Any other adjectives you want to use for poor, Just poor old Phil? Thesaurus awful, okay? And all of them. Uh, but I am playing him this week. Oh, no! Welcome in. Oh, oh we got the band back together. Sort of. Tuesday, November 19th, the fantasy footballers Andy, Mike... And Jason. It's basically a two-man show because I'm about 50%. Jason's about 50%. <laughs> Different reasons. The outside <laughs> of my body is here. My, the shell that you have come to know as Jason Moore is still on the show. <laughs> Jason Moore is no more? The inside is hollow. I am an M and M with no chocolate. So you're like the uh, the Easter chocolate bunnies. Oh, with the where, where it's you're like oh that's a whole bunch of chocolate. Oh, except it's not. they serve a purpose. Mm. <laughs> oh my god! They can be delicious and a tasty <laughs> treat. While I have no reason this. to be here. <laughs> you do. You absolutely do have a reason to be here. It's waiver day. We have uh, a tremendous amount of listeners that are just. Uh, dying for your advice. I They're guess. I guess. Dying for your death. I guess I am serving a purpose here because, you know, look, you eat that chocolate bunny, it's not good for you, but it gives you something that you want. And you've come here to this show today to witness <laughs> oh, the no. death of a man. And, and I want to provide that for you. Not I everybody. Want you to, I want you to enjoy. This isn't good for you. But I hope it tastes delicious. <laughs> it did My for tears. Me. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Why don't you fill people in? Yeah, not every <laughs> fill fill them in. Well, you hey can't oh. fill me in. No, no, no. Fill them. Fill a fill river. Them. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> a river of tears. Kay. It was. I had Patrick Mahomes. Jason had his good friend Philip Rivers, as well as Tyreek Hill. Yada yada yada. Tyreek Hill left the game. Yada yada yada. Mahomes had a terrible game. Rivers is driving down the field. Rivers needs to essentially drive down the field for Jason to win. And he does. And he does. And I won. And Jason was up by half a point until one more. One more interception. I believe that is seven interceptions in the last two games. I have had all of them. <laughs> um, but it took each one to put me where I'm at right now. Okay, Jason. <laughs> Does that bring you back? Oh, man. PTSD? I'll tell you what. If you are uh, not watching on YouTube, you did not get the experience of of seeing a man without a soul. <laughs> um, you only heard it, and, and, and it's not good enough. But th that is the reason why this week, week 14, with the plush matchup, I will not go down with Philip Rivers. <laughs> I will never do it again. You were a dead man. Oh, man. You were I, a dead man. Watching... The my eyes, I remembered the feeling of of just hollowness, just torment. Okay, number oh, two, Brooksy. P River. Number two. So we're talking oh. David Johnson. 
the 22nd pick of the third round by the Arizona Cardinals. Be still my heart. And if you want a fun time, go watch <laughs> David Johnson's highlight reels. David Johnson. David Johnson. Uh, time David has come. Johnson. Somehow. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> David Johnson. Oh. David Johnson. Oh, David Johnson. Wow, come on. David Johnson. <laughs> oh, I went for the hoo hoo hoo. <laughs> And I swallowed my throat. I don't know what happened. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. Just happened. It did not feel good. I feel like we owe David an apology. Yeah, oh we do. Oh, God. goodness. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. If, if you want to not miss that, go to the I YouTube I hope that's version. not a premonition for the oh. season. There better be a hoo-hoo-hoo after David Johnson. What? <laughs> there it is. All right. All right. We individually. Jason's soul left his body. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> I forgot about this. Oh, yeah, that one caught me off guard. I forgot about it. Well, that's it. a double whammy memory because I feel like the David Johnson experience when yeah. he was coming out as a rookie and his uh, sophomore year breakout that, you know, this show was, uh, you know, on that moment. But then it also had the throat swallowing moment tied oh, it was good. to it. It was special. Was that the year that he went out week one? I don't want to know, man, because if, if, it, if it was. I think it was a premonition and yeah. you even you even called it. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Number oh. one overall moment, Brooksy? Number one. I'm excited to find out what it is. Number one. Okay, let's move on to the news. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Super newsy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm. Yeah. We're going news. back to the 80s. What on earth? <laughs> I'm leaving this in. Oh, this is magical. ESPN's Adam Schefter reports. <laughs> The MRI has confirmed so, Jimmy Garoppolo's initial diagnosis of a torn left ACL. Someone call Axel F. Get Axel Foley in here immediately. So if you could see Brooks' face, it's a gas. <laughs> so a couple days ago, what? we lost our whole soundboard. Where did that, where did that come, come from? from? We lost our whole soundboard, and Brooks rebuilt it. And he, I, we hadn't played news since then. That is maybe my favorite. Yeah. Cardinals coach Steve Wilkes announced Monday that rookie Josh Rosen will start at quarterback going forward. Oh, man. Dalvin that Cook, day to day, <laughs> unsure of his week four status. <laughs> Jaguars coach Doug Marone said running backs Leonard Fournette and TJ Yeldon will be day-to-day -day this week. Speaking Monday, Titans coach Mike Vrabel said there are still throws Marcus Mariota can't make. Hey, guess what? Alshon Jeffrey still hasn't been cleared for contact. <laughs> the best news segment That's, of all We've time. never See, had a better news segment. Oh, oh man. Gosh. So that was by far the number one submitted answer was a moment, uh, like I, I, probably all moments of the show, that have... Accidents. Whoopsies. <laughs> Brooks... How, how did you feel in that moment? Let's get your thoughts. When you realized that you had put the wrong song in there. It's the worst feeling ever, basically. <laughs> and yet, but, but the worst feeling ever is the best moment in show history. Yep. Wow. You guys, that's what you guys, the power of you guys. Uh, you can't screw up, can you, Brooks? You just can't. You can't screw up. What a crazy ride this first thousand episodes has been. Oh. <laughs> Spontaneous over. congratulations. Surprise! It's the wise. <laughs> Guys, a thousand episodes. I can't believe it. Amazing. Pretty Do you bananas. remember when they were squished in that tiny upstairs bedroom, Caleb's bedroom? It smelled like feet. <laughs> right. I baked yeah. cookies way too many times. They started off, and it was pretty scary because they basically said, Hey, we're going to start this fantasy football <laughs> podcast. Like, no one's done it before. Here, here's what's crazy. It's okay. Like, Okay. Yeah. And they kept their families first through it all. That we yeah, never I, felt like we were forgotten or left behind. Our kids are no. always feel like they are just the they center are, of their world. Daddy tucks them in. They are helping with homework. They're There's at every show. Yep. Mm -hmm. Every performance. Tonight. That I think is the greatest gift. Just so you all know, Foot Clan, the footballers you see are the footballers we are at home. <laughs> oh with. yeah, Andy dances Minus. like a bird. My home clothes. Jason. Jason. Oh, yeah. Jason is in his underwear. Ninety. <laughs> 98%. So they are genuinely 
that's who they are. Yeah. The thing that's, I think, awesome, too, is about the show is not only for other families, but for our own families. We know that our husbands have a job that our own kids can listen to. Each of us has our own little football player in the family. And so <laughs> so to not only have that person that they can get advice from, but it's also their dad and they can look right. up to them and just watch that relationship grow between the boys and their dads. That's just been something that's been really special to watch, too. It's going to be really cool to see those little guys grow up to be the next yeah. fantasy footballers. <laughs> Terrifying. Right. right. Yeah. So here's to a thousand more. A We're thousand so proud more. of you guys. Congratulations. Hmm. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. Shut it's it a, down, Al. It's Shut it down. One, but I am deceased. <laughs> woo Thank you, everybody. Oh, my goodness. Congrats, you guys. Al. Judge Giamatti, the whole team, thank you so much. Kyle, Schneider, Rob, Josh, Josh everybody yeah. out there. Like, okay. Yeah, be, oh man. That Well We we cannot thank you enough. Final this, show. This <laughs> a life transforming journey we have been on. It is I mean it's Jason's wrong. It, it's gonna keep going. Maybe to three thousand. We might have to shut it down on three thousand, but all right. Thank you, everybody. Oh. We'll break down some matchups tomorrow. Sound good? <laughs> yeah. After we recover. <laughs> Take care. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Bookland, there's nothing better than a delicious Omaha Steaks holiday feast. Get that Deluxe Grillers assortment today. Right now, you can get that Deluxe Grillers assortment plus four free burgers, a free digital meat thermometer at an exclusive price just for the Foot Clan. Go to omahasteaks.com, enter the code FOOTBALLERS into the search bar.